Hello and welcome to this After Effects Basics tutorial. We're carrying on from the last tutorial where we created a solid and we actually added an effect just to demonstrate what happened. But I mentioned that in this tutorial we're going to look at something very important and that is these transforms. Now when you create a layer, you get a little twirly, a little triangle at the side. You open up the triangle and you'll see, I'm just going to move this up a bit, that there are a number of items underneath. Now if you've applied an effect, and we haven't applied an effect, we've applied the advanced lightning, you'll see that you've also got that under a twirly, so you've got advanced lightning, and all the parameters that are up here are also available down here. So it's an excellent way of finding things in your timeline as well as being able to use them up here, but at the moment we're not going to deal with that, in fact we're going to delete advanced lightning, so I'm going to select it up here in my effects controls and hit delete, and you'll see that the effects tab has now disappeared the solid has gone back to how it originally was, but yet I still have these transforms, which are called fixed effects, that apply to every layer. And if you look at the other layers that we've applied, you open those up, you'll see that exactly the same ones are applied to every layer. Anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. And I'm just going to quickly go through each one of these to show you what they are. Now, I'm going to start with scale, and I'm going to explain what we've got in this timeline down here. We should be able to see it reflected up here in our composition panel. Now the first thing to say is you have little stopwatches in front of each one of these different effects, which means that these items can be animated. We're not going to go through that at the moment, but the stopwatch is the key to animation, and we'll go through that when we deal with animation. And then you've got the name of the individual items, and then you have this orange text. Now firstly you've got reset, and reset will reset everything to how it originally was. And this yellowy orange text is scrubbable text. Yes, you can click on it and change it, but also you can click and hold and drag and start to change values. As you can see, as I start to change scale, you'll see that it's getting smaller as I go to lower values and bigger, and then you can see I've got an outline as I go beyond 100% to make it even bigger. So that hot text or draggable text and if you want to get back to how it originally was, you just click Reset, and it's back to how it originally was. Now, the only other thing to see, particularly for scale, is you've got a little chain here, which is a link. That means that if I move the X and the Y, so across and up and down, they'll both move together. But if I undo that, what I can do is, say, take the Y, and I can make it thinner whilst not affecting its width. So I'm changing it in the Y dimension, but I'm not changing it in the X dimension. Or alternatively, I can change it in the X dimension and not necessarily in the Y at the same time. So if you want to get a custom size that's not linked, then you click this little link button and it's undone. If you click it again, it's now going to stay at those proportions and link. Okay, So you have the option of being able to make a custom size which isn't in the same proportion as the original, and then you can link it together and it will always stay the same. Now you can again click Reset. It's taken back to 100% and it's linked. Now I'm just going to pull it down so that we can see a few other things. So I can take that down to about 30, 32, 33%. Okay, now obviously you can click up here in the composition panel and click and hold and move it. But as I do that, I want you to see down here position. I've got two values for position. Second one down, you'll see that they change. So click, hold, drag, and you'll see that the position, the X and the Y value, are actually changing. So if I go across screen, you'll see that it's pretty much the X value that's changing. If I go up and down the screen, you'll see it's pretty much the Y value. And again, you can scrub those. So if I scrub the position, X, I'm going to go across the screen, right and left, and Y is going to go up and down the screen. So that's how you can change the position of an item. The next one I want to look at is opacity, a very simple one. Opacity is how visible something is. Now at the moment this is very visible, we can see it, it's completely and utterly opaque, which is like a, a wood painted door. You can't see through it, but if I take this down to zero, it's going to get more and more transparent until at zero it will be completely invisible. So let me just pull the opacity all the way down, and you'll see that when it gets to zero it's completely disappeared, and pull it back up, we're changing how transparent or opaque this actual item is. 
and of course as I said all these items can be animated. Next one I'll show you is rotation and rotation actually has two values and the way to read this is the number of times degrees. So complete rotations is the first one. So if you go on this one you'll see no difference because it is complete rotations. It's the second one that gives you degrees. So if I go around like this, as soon as I go to 360 you'll see it says one full rotation and I've gone three degrees beyond. Again I keep going and I keep going and I can get to two full rotations and extra degrees and go all the way back. So the first one is saying complete rotations and the second one is saying the number of degrees. So if I scrub this first one you'll see that it makes absolutely no difference at all because obviously they are complete rotations so you won't see them. But the second one are the number of degrees and again if you go over 360 you'll get one and then over 360 again two and so on and you can go on and go on that way. So you see this particular layout actually quite a lot in After Effects and quite a few of the effects as well. So it's good to understand complete rotations and the degrees here. Now when you look at rotation you can see that as I drag rotation it is rotating from this little circle bit in the middle which is called its anchor point. Now I can pull it and it's rotating from there but I can also change where the anchor point is. So here's the anchor point and I can pull it, pull it across, pull it down and now the anchor point is in the top left corner so that when I do rotation I get a completely different scenario to when it was in the middle. It looks entirely different and the anchor point is where your transforms happen from. So if I now do scale and I start to increase scale, can you see that it's actually transforming from the anchor point. Not from the middle but from the anchor point and for solids anchor points initially are always set right at the middle. So if I just reset again you'll see that there is the anchor point so that when I scale it's scaling from the middle but if I move the anchor point and again I can move it this way all the way across. Now when I scale it's scaling from that side. Now sometimes it's not very helpful to move the anchor point and have the actual layer shift so if I just control Z to undo that, there's the anchor point in the middle. So I actually wanted this item to stay in this place because I carefully positioned it, but actually I needed to move the anchor point. There is actually a tool to do that. In fact, there's a tool to do a number of these things. If we look here, you get this very weird looking one, which is called the pan behind tool. And if you click on the pan behind tool, keyboard shortcut Y, you can actually physically click and drag and move anchor points. So there, now I manually I can move this anchor point to any place I like. So I can move it to the bottom right hand corner if I like. Now I need to go back to my arrow tool or my selection tool, which is V is the keyboard shortcut, or as you can see over here, you can just selection tool. Now I can go back to my scale, and you'll see it's scaling from that point. And if I rotate, it's also rotating from that point. And just so you can see, two tools further to the left there is one that says a rotation tool which has a keyboard shortcut W so we often call it the rotation tool because it's a W so you can hit W to get this particular tool or just click on the icon and now you can physically rotate your item from wherever the anchor point is on screen which is easier sometimes than actually having to go down here and scrub hot text to get rotations perfectly. Okay, so both of those options are there. The rotation tool, which is W, and the pan behind tool, which is Y, for moving these items around so that we can actually change where our transforms are going to happen from. And we can get all kinds of interesting effects. So those are your transforms or your fixed effects which apply to every single layer. And we can animate those and we can do all kinds of very cool and interesting things once we get used to using those. There's one final thing to say about selecting these transforms from any layer. If you select a layer, you can twirl it down and then twirl the transforms up and down to get to the appropriate bits and pieces. But you can also select them with keyboard shortcuts. And the shortcuts are pretty obvious. It's A for anchor point, P for position, S for scale, R for rotation, and no, it's not O for opacity, it's T for opacity. Those are the different shortcuts to select it. So if you have a layer twirled shut, and you want to select opacity, hit T, and that comes opacity, S, scale, A, anchor point, P, position, R, rotation. 
and if you want to have more than one come up at the same time, hold the shift key. So I've got rotation up, if I hold the shift key and hit P, I've got position up as well, and if I hit shift key, S, A, T, they're all there. So that's how you can use a keyboard shortcut to get to these effects very quickly. And of course, what you can do is you can select multiple layers. So if I select all these three layers, and now I hit T, I've got opacity for all of those layers, and I can affect them all together because they're all selected. Okay, so that's how you can select these different bits and pieces. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Thank you.